what we do is we see the patient, we do a physical examination, and once the determination is made both with my input, the patient's input, and other multidisciplinary doctors, we oftentimes get an image. That could be a CT scan, computer tomography, an MR scan, magnetic resonance, a PET scan, positron emission tomography, or maybe one or two combinations of those. We may fuse the scan, so we see the anatomical abnormality, the functional abnormality, and we can see the target that we're trying to aim at as well as the normal tissues. The patient is usually immobilized either with a mask or a body fabrication cast-like device I referred to earlier when that scan is taken. Then we set up a customized treatment plan where there may be several beam angles that are uh, entering the patient and exiting in different manners with different energies. Um, and once we come up with an optimal plan, we do QA or quality assurance to make sure we actually can deliver that plan. Take some pictures for verification. We sign a prescription that's checked and double checked and triple checked. And then we eventually deliver the treatment and we take films to verify that we did execute the treatment correctly. Um, and the radiation del is delivered usually in a regular fashion every other day or once a day or even maybe twice a day. Um, and then as physicians, we see the patient usually uh, at least once a week, could be more often to manage symptoms and any other concerns patients may have. I'm Barb Agramson. I work at Oregon Health Science University. I'm a certified medical dosimetrist for the radiation oncology department. So dosimetry is measurements of absorbed dose of radiation. Uh, medical dosimetry is utilizing radiation to treat patients who have been diagnosed with cancer or some non-malignant tumors. So following the CT um, simulation, the images were then imported into our treatment planning system. And this is basically my workstation all day long. So I, um, over here you have all the axial slices that were taken at the time of the simulation. Then the planning system will create a 3D image that we will work on and do our planning on from this point forward. So some of the structures that we're going to encounter in our pathway that we, when we treat, say, the tumor that's located in the esophagus are, would be the spinal cord, we have the heart right here, we have the lungs. Those are all critical structures and we want to maintain their integrity while at the same time treating the tumor volume to enough dose that it will you know, rid itself of the, of the cancer. What is dose? Dose is, is really energy per mass. So it's joule, the unit would be joule per kilogram, which is the same as, as gray. So we typically prescribe dose in gray to our patients. So typical dose per fraction is one or two, 1 1.8 or 2 gray or 2.5 gray. And sometimes we prescribe very high, high doses per fraction. So relative biology effect is uh, as we try to not just look at the absorbed dose to a patient, we also want to look at the biological effect the radiation has on the patient. So you could have two types of radiation absorbing the same dose to tissue, but one type of radiation could have a much larger biological effect in terms of causing damage to tissue. Now this is uh, measured in sievert or REM instead of measured, being measured in, in gray. So absorbed dose is measured in a unit called gray. And so when we prescribe dose to patients in radiotherapy, we, we prescribe dose in gray. Um, but if in health physics, if we want to measure the exposure to the staff or if we want to protect people from radiation, um, we usually measure those in terms of the biological effect the radiation has. And so if I want to compare the biological effect of a neutron beam, for example, to the biological effect of a photon beam, I need to use a multiplier. And you know, let's say neutrons have a 10 times higher biological effect uh, if they deliver the same dose to the patient um, that means even if I deliver the same dose, but I deliver two gray through a photon beam and I deliver two gray to, through a, a neutron beam, the biologic effect of the neutron beam is going to be 10 times higher. So that means I would still have a, a 10 times higher uh, damage to the, pa to the patient or to the, to, the, to the human being irradiated. So uh, this is measured in sievert. Sievert is basically absorbed dose multiplied with a, um, a multiplier that is. Uh, given to each type of radiation. 
if I prescribe, uh, let's say, a gray of dose to a patient, what, what does it mean? How does this relate to uh, the doses we would maybe be receiving uh, in our national environment? If I look at uh, the approximate dose that a, a, you know, a US citizen would in the United States would receive um, through the environment, it would be about three millisievert per year. So we have to figure out, again, how to treat this tumor to the intended dose and spare all the critical structures that are surrounding it, heart, cord, and the lungs. So you can see the challenge there because if you exceed certain dose structures of like the spinal cord, you could cause paralysis of the patient. So, so you think, well, geez, why don't you just put in an AP beam, which is this what we call anterior to posterior so it would enter the patient's anteriorly um, and exit posteriorly and then you could oppose it so just another PA posterior to anterior beam um, that way your lungs would be spared you'd you know again you'd be compromising the cord and the heart so so again the fields that we set include um, Let's see, hold on, let me put on the target volume. And then we usually will put a margin around that because cancer does not stay put, so it's gonna be spreading. And esophageal cancer we know spreads um, along the esophagus and along the lymphatic um, vessels that are nearby. So they usually will uh, allow a margin of radiation, or sorry, a margin around the tumor volume to encompass the likelihood of where it's gonna spread. So this is called our, our planning target volume. So this is what a field would look like if it was in an anterior position and then the posterior would be just the oppose, opposing um, field. And it's not gonna work because we're gonna to have to give so much dose to the heart and to the cord in order to get tumor dose um, at and to meet our prescription. So you could try another option, which would be changing the angle of the beams. And so I'm pulling in a three-field arrangement. So in this case, we have a beam that comes in from the anterior, and we have two posterior oblique fields. So the beauty of this is that the spinal cord, which is right here, is avoided by the angulation of the two posterior beams. This is showing us based on what we've contoured in, what our lung volumes are, our cord volume, all of the volumes that have been contoured in, we can sort of get a, a volumetric display of the dose at various, um, broken into percentages of the volume. Okay, so another um, common cancer that we treat in our department is head and neck associated diseases. And an issue that is common with that is the metal that are in people's mouths. So we've had a lot of fillings and whatnot through the years and those then are picked up quite um, obviously when we do the CT simulation. And they are awful because you can't delineate the tumor volume because there's so much artifact that's created. This artifact has been contoured out and overridden with the density. The planning then would um, initiate based on this type of uh, an image.